greetings of the day to all students <clears throat> today we are going to uh, discuss uh, something more about uh, selective harmonic elimination technique in fact today we are going to discuss uh, offline optimized pwm technique offline optimized pwm technique which is also called stored waveform pwm stored waveform pulse width modulation technique or stored waveform pwm <clears throat> this is the topic of discussion of today's lecture <clears throat> actually if you see the literature in the literature the selective harmonic elimination technique which is basically low switching frequency PWM technique whereby you suppress certain harmonics certain selective harmonics and you control the fundamental component of inverter output voltage you will find in the literature that this technique has been used mostly in the offline mode <clears throat> in the offline mode what we do is that <laughs> for example if your aim is to reduce the THD of the line current so you may suppress certain harmonics for example you may suppress fifth harmonic <coughs> you may suppress seventh harmonic maybe eleventh harmonic and thirteenth harmonic also for which you will solve about three four or five transcendental equations and you will find the pairs of switching angles alpha one and alpha two which will give you a desired value of fundamental component of voltage and suppressed harmonics such that the THD of the motor current or THD of the line current is reduced. So this may be the goal. This is called optimization. Another objective may be to minimize the pulsating torque because the harmonics in the voltages cause harmonics in the currents <coughs> excuse me and harmonics in the motor currents cause harmonics in the air gap fluxes. And they, when there are harmonics in the air gap flux, this air gap flux, this air gap flux harmonics interact with the motor current and they produce harmonic torques, uh, which are also called pulsating torques. <clears throat> the aim may be to minimize the pulsating torque or the aim may be to minimize motor losses or <clears throat> the objective may be to minimize the total losses of the system that is to minimize the inverter losses and motor losses. When this is the aim, then what we do is that we, we calculate the optimal values of switching angles alpha 1, alpha 2 and store them as a lookup table. And then we, uh, uh, we uh, get them whenever we want to implement a set, this PWM technique, offline optimized PWM technique. We, <clears throat> from that lookup table, we obtain alpha 1 and alpha 2 such that we get a desired fundamental component of voltage and our you know other aim is also fulfilled the other aim may be minimization of thd of line current minimization of pulsating torque minimization of motor losses or <coughs> minimization of total losses of the system so therefore these may be the uh, you know objectives Ob objectives may be minimization of THD that's total harmonic distortion of line current or this is also equivalent to minimization of weighted THD weighted total harmonic distortion WTHD I will discuss this WTHD with you in a minute's time WTHD of voltage inverter output voltage or motor input voltage this may be the objective minimization of THD of line current or equivalently minimization of weighted THD, WTHD of voltage. The objective may be different. Objective may be minimization of pulsating torque. Minimization of pulsating torque. I mean when ob objective is minimization of pulsating torque, in that case <laughs> our aim is not to uh, minimize the THD of the current or weighted THD of the voltage. Our aim is to select the pairs of switching angles <laughs> alpha 1 and alpha 2 in such a way 
that pulsating torque in the motor is minimized. How can we do that? We will see in a minute's time. Our aim may also be minimization of motor losses. Minimization of motor losses. Actually, the losses which are taking place in the motor, we find their relationship of those losses with the switching angles. Okay, and if we are able to <coughs> find how these motor losses are affected by uh, switching angles, these motor losses, their relation we find with the switching angles, and if we are able to find a mathematical relationship between motor losses and switching angles, alpha 1 and alpha 2, we will uh, select a, a particular combination of alpha 1 and alpha 2 in such a way that it reduces in minimization of motor losses. So that will fulfill our objective. Our aim may be minimization of total losses. That's all losses. Total losses means inverter losses plus motor losses. That's inverter plus motor losses. Okay. So if our aim is minimization of THD of line current or minimization of weighted THD of voltage, what we do is that we calculate the optimal values, optimal values of switching angles, switching angles. For example, if you are taking only two switching angles, we find optimal values of switching angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 and st <coughs> store them as a lookup table lookup table LUT LUT means lookup table <coughs> I repeat if our aim is to minimize THD of the line current or weighted THD of the voltage so we select certain harmonics maybe 5th, 7th, 11th harmonic and suppress them for that purpose, we calculate the optimal values of switching angles, alpha 1, alpha 2, and if there is alpha 3 also, and we find what are the values of these switching angles for which we get minimum THD of the line current or minimum weighted THD of the voltage. I have already given you <coughs> an idea about how to select the, the trajectory or locus of point um, on switching angle plane such that a specific harmonic or a pair of harmonics is suppressed along with getting the desired fundamental component of voltage. Once we get the optimal values of switching angles, what we do? We store them as a lookup table. So this calculation is not done online. It is done offline. Okay. So these offline calculations are done. Mathematical relationships are produced and equations are solved using numerical techniques. Uh, uh, to minimize the THD or weighted THD and once we get you know various combinations or various pairs of switching angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 we'll store them in the computer memory as a lookup table LUT and then what we do is that we fetch these values from the lookup table uh, when whenever we want to control a particular load so for example we want that V1 should be equal to V1 star and so for V1 equal to V1 star and simultaneously we want that weighted THD should be minimum. So these, for this condition, the optimal values of switching angles are already stored in the lookup table. So we fetch those values of switching angles from switching table, uh, this lookup table and accordingly uh, the PWM voltage waveforms are produced which are applied across the load and hence we get the desired objective that is V1 equal to V1 star and minimization of THD also takes place. On the other hand our aim may be minimization of pulsating torque. Okay, So I will discuss with you if the aim is minimization of pulsating torque then in that case it is not necessary for us <coughs> to suppress or eliminate certain harmonics but we find a relationship uh, for which the pulsating torque will be minimum and that relationship we link with the switching angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 and then we calculate the optimal values of these switching angles and again store them in a, a lookup table and you know later on fetch them for minimization of pulsating torque in induction motors. Our aim may, or objective may be minimization of motor losses. 
So we try to find mathematical relationship between motor losses and switching angles. Once we have found the relationship between motor losses and switching angles, we calculate optimal values of switching angles such that, such that we get the desired fundamental component of voltage which is applied across the motor and simultaneously the motor losses are kept at a minimum. So this is also done offline. So this optimization is done offline and alpha 1 alpha 2 values are stored in the form of a lookup table. Our aim may be minimization of total losses that, that's inverter minimization of inverter losses as well as motor losses. Here again we find the mathematical relationship between these losses in the system and switching angles. Calculate the optimal values of switching angles offline, store them in the form of a lookup table and when we run the load, say motor, so we fetch these alphas from these switching angles to produce a specific PW voltage waveform which gets applied across the motor terminals <laughs> giving us V1 equal to V1 star and simultaneously minimize, minimizing the total losses that's minimizing inverter losses and motor losses so this is called offline optimized pwm technique or stored waveform pwm technique because when we calculate these switching angles we basically draw a waveform for these switching angles and that waveform itself we store in the form of a lookup table okay let us try to discuss the first the minimization of thd offline current so uh, objective may be minimization of weighted THD of voltage which means THD of the line current first of all let me define weighted THD <clears throat> I will write here weighted THD of inverter output voltage which is also called WTHD it is given by this relation, it is given by 1 by V1. V1 is the fundamental component of whole voltage into summation of n equal to 5, 7, 11, 13, so on. <clears throat> Vn by n square whole raised power 1 by 2. This is the mathematical relationship for weighted THD, WTHD. Actually, actually what happens? The inverter at its output pr uh, produces fundamental component of voltage and it also produces the harmonic voltage is Vn. When a particular harmonic voltage is applied across the motor terminals, this harmonic voltage sees, produces a current in the motor terminal and this harmonic voltage sees the reactance of the voltage which is n times xl. Say for example if xl is the xl is the omega L it is the reactance of the motor winding at fundamental frequency of 50 Hertz for nth harmonic component of the voltage which gets applied across the motor it sees it does not see a reactance of omega L it sees a reactance of n times XL that is n times omega L where n is the harmonic order for example if you are applying fifth harmonic component of voltage across motor terminals I mean if the inverter output voltage contains fifth harmonic component then this fifth harmonic component will see a motor reactance which is equal to 5 times omega L if seventh harmonic component of voltage gets applied across the motor terminals it sees a reactance motor reactance 7 times omega L so in general we can say Vn which is the harmonic component of voltage it sees a reactance of nxl or n times omega l so therefore what will be the current and the harmonic component of current it will be fundamental component of current divided by n okay or it will be equal to vn by <clears throat> n omega l so nth harmonic component of current will be vn that is, uh, this nth harmonic component of current is basically produced by nth harmonic component of the voltage divided by, no, it, it will not be divided by omega L, it will be divided by n omega L. For example, the fifth, if fifth harmonic component of voltage is gets applied across the motor, so fifth harmonic component of current will flow through the motor winding, whose magnitude will be given by V5 divided by 5 omega L. Similarly, seventh harmonic component of current will be given by V7 divided by 7 omega L. So therefore, when we define 
you know, weighted THD. Weighted THD is basically given by this relationship. Summation n equal to 5, 7, 11, 13 and so on. Vn by n whole square raised power 1 by 2. I mean square root of all of this. We are, um, <clears throat> so it is a whole divided by V1 where V1 is the fundamental component of voltage. Okay. So <laughs> this Vn basically produces the, uh, you know, it sees uh, n times omega L reactance in the motor. And as far as this Vn by n is concerned, it is indicative, it is indicative of IN, nth harmonic component of current. So therefore, if you try to reduce this weighted THD, if you use offline optimized PWM te technique, calculate combinations of alpha 1 and alpha 2 in such a way that this weighted THD gets reduced. Weighted THD reduced means this Vn by N, you are basically reducing this when you are reducing Vn by N, basically you are reducing the nth harmonic com component of current. So that means a reduction of weighted THD of the voltage. When you reduce it, you are basically reducing the THD of the current. Because when you are reducing weighted THD, you are reducing basically this Vn by N. And when Vn by N is reduced, you are basically reducing the nth order uh, or nth component of the current. So that way you are reducing the THD of the line current. So a reduction of weighted THD of voltage directly or indirectly means reduction of THD of the current. So if this is our, you know, um, uh, you know, so once you find weighted THD and you reduce it, you multiply it by uh, impedance, no load impedance divided by block rotor impedance of the induction motor. You know, you find the no load impedance of motor Divide that by block rotor impedance of the motor. When you find weighted THD, multiply this weighted THD by the ratio of no load impedance to block rotor impedance. So that will give you THD of the current, uh, THD of the line current. THD of line current. So THD of line current will be, you know, directly affected by weighted THD. Smaller the weighted THD of the voltage, smaller will be the THD of the line current. So how can you now reduce the weighted THD of the voltage or in other words, how can you reduce the THD of the motor current or line current? We can reduce it by suppressing certain harmonics. For example, uh, let us go back to a previous lecture, zero fifth harmonic voltage contours, which we have developed in, uh, which we have discussed in one of the previous lectures. Briefly, if I uh, repeat it again, if I uh, discuss it with you and I draw the waveform or switching angle plane again, this is alpha 1, 0 degree, alpha 2, this is 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, 80 degrees, 90 degrees. This is alpha 1 and alpha 2 varies like this, 10 degrees, 20 degrees. 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, 80 degrees, <coughs> and 90. this may be 90 degrees. So just draw these uh, boundaries. This is alpha 2 equal to 90 degrees. This is alpha 1 equal to 90 degrees. This is alpha 1 equal to alpha 2. Here V1 is equal to 1 per unit. Okay. So ten degrees, twenty degrees, thirty degrees, forty, fifty. I'm trying to draw the grid sixty. I have already discussed it in one of the previous lectures. I am reproducing the switching angle plane and hence the contours of V5 equal to 0. 0 fifth harmonic voltage contours I want to reproduce. Okay, so this is the grid. First of all, let me show you uh, the V1 equal to 0 contour and this is equal, this is your V1 equal to 0 contour. This is V1 equal to 0 per unit contour. And if you remember, when we have drawn this uh, V5 equal to zero contours, 
in one of the previous classes, it was looking like this, something like this. So this was the contour. This is your P5 equal to zero contour. This is one of the contour. All the switching angle combinations, pairs of switching angles, or all the points on uh, this contour or locus of point along this contour will ensure that V5 is equal to zero. What is the other contour? Other contour is somewhere here. That is not of interest to us. What is the other contour? If you remember, other contour is like this. This is also V5 equal to zero per unit contour. Here also V5 is equal to zero per unit. <clears throat> so therefore, if you remember, I was discussing with you in one of the previous classes, say here, for example, if you draw one uh, contour, V1 contour, this is V1 contour, sorry, this is here, this V1 is 0 0.8 uh, per unit. If you draw another V1 contour, which is tangential to this curve, V5 equal to 0 contour, it will move along like this. So here, this V1 is 0 0.956 per unit. <laughs> Let me use a different color. This is 0 0.956 per unit. And this contour is 0 0.8 per unit, right? And in between, you will have various other contours. For example, this may be 0 0.2 per unit contour. This may be 0 0.6 per unit contour. Similarly, this may be 0 0.9 per unit contour. So here V1 is equal to 0 all throughout. V1 is equal to 0 per unit along this contour. Along this contour, V1 is 0.2 per unit. Along this contour, V1 is 0.6 per unit. Along this contour, V1 is 0.8 per unit, which just touches this V5 equal to 0 contour here. Along this contour, V1 is equal to 0.9 per unit. And along this contour, V1 is equal to 0.956 per unit. And along this line, V1 is equal to 1 per unit. Our area of interest is from V1 equal to 0 to V1 equal to 1 because V1 increases like this. this is the increase in V1. So if you want a uh, controllable output voltage, if you want fundamental component of voltage to increase monotonically, you can, you know, this may be the loci of the locus of the points and you will get various waveforms, PWM waveforms, voltage waveforms, which will get applied across motor terminals or across the terminals of load and V1 will be increasing or you may decrease it. But our aim is not only to increase V1 or to control V1. The aim is to suppress simultaneously fifth harmonic component of voltage. So therefore, the locus of points will not be these. The locus of the point will be those that locus which will move along these V5 equal to zero contours. Your V5 equal to zero contour is this is your V5 equal to zero contour one. And your second V5 equal to zero contour is like this. This is your second V5 equal to zero contour. So therefore, you are, you know, these V1 contours, they are intersecting V5 equal to zero contour at various points like this. So therefore, you can start with V1 equal to zero. And you can move along this V5 equal to zero contour and you will get various switching combinations of alpha 1 or alpha 2. For example, here alpha 1 may be 62 degrees, alpha 2 may be 89 degrees, here alpha 1 may be, you know, 63 degrees, alpha 2 may be 84, 87 degrees and so on. So different alpha 1 and alpha 2 pairs you will get all along this. And that will increase V1 monotonically and simultaneously it will ensure that V5 is equal to zero. So when you reach this point, at this point, what is V1 here? V1 is maximum here along this contour, 0 0.8 per unit. And if you have to increase V1 more than 0 0.8 per unit, you have two choices. Either you move along this and, you know, and you, till you reach V1 equal to 1 per unit, but problem of following this path or this trajectory is that here when you move along this in this direction no doubt v1 will increase from point 
8 per unit to 1 per unit, but V5 will not be equal to 0 because V5 contour ends here. So therefore, you have another V5 equal to 0 contour, that is this. So you can start from here because here V1 is equal to 0 per unit, then you can move along your, your the locus of point can, can be like this. You can move along this contour, which will increase V1 monotonically and simultaneously it will ensure that all along this curve V5 equal to 0 till you reach this point. And at this point, what is V1? What is V1 here? V1 is maximum value 0.956 per unit. And then if you have to move from 0.956 per unit to 1 per unit, then you can move along this. Okay. So uh, beyond 0.956 per unit, you will be increasing V1 from 0.956 per unit to 1 per unit, but V5 will not be equal to 0. V1, V5 will not be suppressed. So generally what we do, if you start from here, you re reach from V1 equal to 0, increase V1 monotonically till you reach V1 equal to 0.8. Then from here you jump to this contour of V5 equal to 0, move along this till you reach V1 equal to 0.956 per unit. So that will ensure that V1 increases monotonically if you have to increase V1 and that will also ensure that V5 all along these V5 equal to 0 contours, V5 is equal to 0. So there is no fifth harmonic component of voltage applied across the load terminals or motor terminals. So therefore, we have various operating regions. For example, uh, we have uh, 0 to 0.8 per unit. From 0 per V1 equal to 0 per unit to V1 equal to 0.8 per unit. How many solutions you have? You have two intersections. One intersection here, another intersection here. So this is one solution, this is another solution. This is one solution, this is another. For example, here V1 is equal to 0.6 per unit, V5 equal to 0. Here also V1 is equal to 0.6 per unit, V5 equal to 0. So similarly, in between you may have more curves, so you have two solutions. So I will write, we have two solutions. Some student may arrive at these solutions along this V5 equal to 0 contour, or some student may arrive at these solutions along V5 equal to 0 contour. Okay. My other boundaries, 0.8, less than or equal to V1, less than or equal to 0.956 per unit. If V1 varies from 0.8 per unit, I mean I jump from 0.8 per unit from this V5 equal to 0 contour to v, this V5 equal to 0 contour till I reach V1 equal to 0.956 per unit. How many solutions we have? From this point onwards, you, are, you know these V1 contours are intersecting only this V5 equal to 0 contour and they are not intersecting V5 equal to 0 contour here. So we have only one solution. And beyond 0.956 per unit, that is 0.956 less than V1, less than or equal to 1.0 per unit. That means if you are V1, fundamental component of whole voltage is greater than 0.956 per unit, up to 1 per unit, we have no solution. Because you can see from 0.956 per unit to 1 per unit, V1 will be increasing, but it will not be intersecting V5 equal to 0 contour. So V1 will be increasing, but V5 will not be equal to 0. So therefore, this can be our trajectory. We can either follow all throughout this curve, or if you are starting from this curve, go up to 0.8 per unit and then jump to this curve to ensure that V5 is equal to 0. So this is, these are the you know contours for 0 fifth harmonic component of voltage. Let us quickly go to 0 7th harmonic voltage contours. I will write here 0 7th harmonic voltage contours. 0 7th harmonic voltage contours, which we have already discussed exclusively in last lecture, yesterday's lecture. So we will try to find out V7 equal to 0 contours on switching angle plane. Let us draw switching angle plane again. <clears throat> so this is our switching angle plane. This is alpha 1 axis, this is alpha 2 axis, this is 0 degree, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, 
80 degrees and 90 degrees. Similarly here 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, 80 degrees and 90 degrees. So let us draw these boundary lines. This is alpha 2 equal to 90 degrees boundary. This is alpha 1 equal to 90 degrees. This is alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 line which will give V1 equal to 1 per unit all throughout. And then we will have this 10 degree line. Twenty degrees, thirty degrees, forty degrees, fifty degrees, sixty degrees, seventy degrees, eighty degrees. These are vertical lines, <clears throat> and my horizontal lines are like this: ten degrees, twenty degrees, thirty degrees, forty degrees, fifty degrees, sixty degrees. 70 degrees, 80 degrees and 90 degrees. So V1 is equal to 0. Contour is this. This is V1 equal to 0 contour. 0 per unit. Okay. Now if you remember, as we have discussed in previous class, last class, V7 equal to 0 contour will start from around 8.57. Alpha 1 equal to 0 degree and alpha 2 equal to 8.57 degree. Here and here it is around alpha 2 equal to 42.5 degrees, something like that. So then this will be our V5 equal to, sorry, V7 equal to 0 contour. So this is our V7 equal to 0 per unit contour, this whole thing. If I shift this curve upward, I will get another contour like this. This is also V7 equal to 0 per unit contour. And along this line, I will get, you know, if I shift this curve towards right side by 51.43 degrees, which we have discussed in the last class, and then shift that curve above by 51.43 degrees, or in other words, if you shift this curve by 51.43 degrees, you will get another curve like this. This curve is also V7 equal to 0 per unit contour. So this is my V7 equal to 0 per unit contour. This is V7 equal to 0 per unit contour. And this is also V7 equal to 0 per unit contour. And my area of interests or my region of interest is this and this. Because my V1 should increase monotonically from V1 equal to 0 per unit to V1 equal to 1 per unit downwards. So therefore, the intersection of V1 contours, yeah, for example, this is V1 equal to 0.2 per unit. This is uh, V1 equal to, say, for example, 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.3 per unit. This is V1 equal to 0.4 per unit. This is another V1, uh, V1 equal to 0.4 per unit. Then these are various contours. This is another contour. You will have a lot many contours like this till you reach this contour and so on. Okay. So here you will find, uh, if you remember here, we have found it in the previous class here. Uh, V1 is 0.46 per unit here. V1 is equal to 0 here and V1 is 0.46 per unit. I will write here V1 is equal to 0 0.46 per unit along this contour. Okay. And here along this contour, which is just intersecting this V7 equal to 0 curve, V1 is probably uh, huh, 0.87 per unit. 0 0.87 per unit. And then you move down. And this contour will give V1 equal to 0 0.978, 0 0.978 per unit, this contour. Okay, so therefore, you have the choice. Either, uh, you know, V1 is equal to 0, this is V1 equal to 0. So, for example, you may have to increase V1 monotonically and simultaneously you have to ensure that 
V7 is suppressed. That is, seventh harmonic component of inverter output voltage is suppressed. So, therefore, the point of intersection between V1 contours and V7 equal to 0 contours. These are the various points of intersection on this curve and on this curve. So, on this curve, we can start from here. Here, V1 is equal to 0 because this contour is V1 equal to 0. Then, you move along. This, this is the locus of points which will give PWM waveforms. And it will ensure that V1 increases monotonically and simultaneously V7 is equal to 0. Till you reach V1 is equal to 0.87 per unit. From here, you will jump to this curve. And when you jump to this curve, you move along this contour. Okay, this is the locus of point which will give PWM waveform, voltage waveforms. And it will increase when you move down. Okay, you will, it will give you alpha 1, alpha 2 switching combinations which will produce PWM voltage waveforms applied across the motor terminal such that when you move down, V1 increases monotonically and simultaneously V7 is equal to 0 till you reach the end of this contour where V1, as you can see, is given by 0 0.978 per unit. If you have to increase beyond 0 0.978 per unit, then you move down and V1 increases from 0 0.978 per unit to 1 per unit but V7 will not be suppressed. So therefore your trajectory could be, I mean, you, you could have started from here also. This could have been the locus of the point, but the problem here is that this is a bad operating point. This is a good operating point. This is a good operating point, but this is a bad operating point. At this point, V1 will be equal to zero, but a strong fifth harmonic component of voltage will get applied across motor terminal. So we don't choose this point. Our starting point we can choose from you know, V1 equal to say 2% or 3%, or 0 0.02 per unit or 0 0.03 per unit somewhere from here and move in this direction. So this could be the locus of the point, PWM waveforms. Till you reach this where V1 is given by this contour which is 0.87 per unit. From here you jump to this curve and follow this locus of the point. This could be the locus of the point. So for rest of the you know uh, voltage, V1 will be increasing from 0.87 per unit up to this 0.978 per unit and simultaneously V7 will be equal to 0 per unit. It will ensure that V7 is equal to 0. So here also you have different boundaries. For example, 0 less than or equal to V1 less than or equal to 0.46 per unit. If you are operating, you are operating your uh, fundamental component of voltage, you are varying from 0 per unit to 0 0.46 per unit. This is 0 per unit, this is 0 0.46 per unit. How many solutions you have? See here, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, everywhere, two points of intersections are there. So we have two solutions. I mean, these V1 contours, they intersect this V7 equal to 0 contour. They don't intersect this contour. So on this contour, they intersect either this point or this point. So two solutions. Here, here. Two solutions. So we, are, we will have two solutions. Then from V1 equal to 0 0.46 per unit, which is this contour, which is this contour, uh, which is this contour, up to V1 equal to 0.87 per unit. So I will write... 0 0.46 less than or equal to V1 less than or equal to 0 0.87 per unit, we will have three solutions. Because from this point onwards, we will have other contours. Say for example, this contour is intersecting V7 equal to 0 contour here, and it is intersecting V7 equal to 0 contour here and here. So we will have three solutions. And in between you may have other many contours, so we will have three solutions. Three solutions. Okay, if you move from 0.87 per unit onwards, say 0.87 per unit to 0.978 per unit, I will write 0.87 less than or equal to less than or equal to 0.978 per unit. Okay, 0.87 per unit is this, which is just touching this contour. Iske baad jitne bhi contours aayenge, they will not touch this curve. They will touch only this contour. So how many solutions you have? You have only one point of intersection. So one solution and beyond 0.978 per unit, that is 0.978 less than V1, less than or equal to 1.0 per unit, 
So that if your fundamental component of voltage is greater than 0.978 per unit, up to 1 per unit, it's not your V1 is increasing, but your V, you know, V1 contours are not intersecting V7 equal to 0 contour. So you have no solution. No solution means fundamental component of voltage we are able to increase from 0.978 per unit to 1 per unit, but 7th harmonic component of voltage will not be equal to 0. V7 will not be equal to 0. So over this range of fundamental component of voltage, we have two solutions. Over this range of fundamental component of voltage, we have three solutions. Over this range of fundamental component of voltage, we have one solution. And over this range of fundamental component of voltage, we have no solution. Okay. Now, in order to reduce, our aim is to reduce the weighted THD of the voltage. In order to reduce the weighted THD of the voltage, it is better for us to look for those points where fifth harmonic as well as seventh harmonic components are eliminated or even if they are not eliminated, they are very, very small in magnitude. So therefore, let us try to see those boundaries where, you know, uh, V5 is nearly equal to zero and V7 is also nearly equal to zero. So I will write here V5 equal to zero and V7 equal to zero contours. Let us try to find out those contours on switching angle plane. <clears throat> This is alpha 1, 0 degree and this is alpha 2, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, 80 degrees and 90 degrees. Along alpha 1 we have 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees. 80 degrees and finally 90 degrees and this is alpha 1 equal to 90 degree boundary this is alpha 2 equal to 90 degree boundary and this is alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 which will give v1 equal to 1 per unit and then these are our grids we will try to reduce the grid at various switching angles 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, alpha 1 equal to 40 degrees, alpha 1 equal to 50 degrees, <coughs> 60, 70, 80. Similarly, alpha 2 is 10 degrees, line 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, 80 degrees and 90 degrees. Now let us draw <coughs> the contours of V5 equal to 0 as well as V7 equal to 0. Your V5 equal to 0 contour is something like this, which we have just few moments back drawn. So first of all, let me draw v, uh, V1 v equal to 0 contour. This is V1 equal to 0 per unit contour. Then your, this is, you know, this is V5 equal to 0 contour. This contour is V5 equal to 0 contour. And V5 equal to 0 contour is this also. This is V5 equal to 0 contour. And you have V5 equal to 0 contour along this curve also. So this curve is also V5 equal to 0 contour. What about V7 equal to 0 contour? We will start from here. V7 equal to 0 contour will be <laughs> from here. This is v7 equal to 0 contour this contour and v7 equal to 0 contour is here also somewhere here just few moments back we have uh, seen this v7 equal to 0 contour and we have v7 equal to 0 contour along this also this is also v7 equal to 0 contour so we have drawn both v5 equal to 0 contour and V7 equal to 0 contours. This is V5 equal to 0 contour. This is also V5 equal to 0 contour. This is V7 equal to 0 contour and this is also V7 equal to 0 contour. Let us try to identify those points where both V5 is 0, V7 is also closely equal to 0. So that point is this. At this point, let me call this point as point A. V1 is equal to 0, 
v5 is equal to 0 because it is touching v5 equal to 0 contour and it is touching v7 equal to 0 contour also. So here all harmonics are 0. If you see, I write here at point A, v1 is equal to 0 per unit, that's okay. v5 equal to v7 equal to v11 equal to v13, so on. All harmonics are 0. I mean, if you draw v11, uh, contour also this will be v11 equal to 0 contour and this will be v13 equal to 0 contour you see at this point all harmonics are 0 then you may have to increase the fundamental component of the voltage when you increase the fundamental component of voltage you take those switching combinations on this switch ang switching angle plane, you select those switching angle combinations alpha 1 and alpha 2 or switching angle pairs alpha 1 and alpha 2 which will give V5 and V7 both nearly equal to 0. So when V1 has to increase, you have to increase V1, you have two choices. Either you increase from here or you increase from here. This is not a good operating point because I have already told you because at this point V5, the fifth harmonic component is very strong. And no doubt, 7th harmonic component is 0, but 5th harmonic, 11, 13, those harmonics are already there. They will get applied across motor terminals. So, if you have to, another operating point is here. Here also you can see V1 is 0, V5 is 0, V7 is also 0. This is, say this is point B. At B, V1 is 0 per unit, V5 is also 0, V7 is also 0 per unit. But here you are getting 11 and 13th harmonic also equal to 0. If you increase V1 monotonically, you, you may, this may be the locus of points. As you move downwards, V1 is increasing. And simultaneously you are ensuring that V5 is 0, but V7 is not 0 along this contour. You can see because V7 is 0 along this contour, you are moving away from this. So this may be your various V1 contours. This may be one V1 contour, another V1 contour, another... You may have a lot many V1 co uh, contours, okay? So you have now one choice. You can move from, uh, you can increase V1 uh, starting from A. When you are starting from A, you move downwards. When you move downwards, V1 increases. And since you are moving downwards along this contour, it ensures that V7 is equal to 0 or is contour by V, you are moving along V11 equal to 0 contour also and V13 equal to 0 contour. And we, you are very close to, this is your V5 equal to 0. When you go down a little bit, V5 is not 0, but it is, you know, very, very small. You are very close to V5 equal to 0 contour. So V5 will have very small magnitude. So therefore, if you have to increase V1, instead of increasing V1 along this contour, okay, you increase V1 along this contour because when you move down, you are ensuring that V1 is increasing along these contours. These are your, this is the locus of point, PWM waveforms, alpha 1 and alpha 2 pairs, which will increase V1, which will produce PWM voltage waveforms across motor terminals such that V1 increases monotonically and simultaneously it will ensure V7 is equal to zero. V11 is 0, V13 is also 0, and V5 is not 0, but it is very close to equal to 0. So that means for low modulation indexes, this region is very important. You should always start from this region. So for low modulation indexes, low inverter output voltages, low modulation indexes, A is a good starting point. A is a good starting. Start from A. Move down. Jab aap niche zyada jate hain, to then you, uh, you know, uh, you are moving away from V5 equal to 0 or of V7, V11, V13 equal to 0 se bhi dur ho rahe hain. To then you are, if you are following this contour, here V1 is increasing and only V7 then becomes equal to 0. V5 is very strong. V11 is very strong. V13 is very strong. So that means this region, this small region, is suitable only for low modulation indexes for high modulation indexes this is this point let me call this point as point c this is the best operating point because agar aap yahan, 
आई मीन जब आप यहाँ नीचे जाते हो एंड देन यू कैन जंप टू दिस कंट्रोल वी वी फाइव इक्वल टू जीरो कंट्रोल और दिस वी सेवन इक्वल टू जीरो कंट्रोल और आपके ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट्स यू कैन फॉलो दिस करो वेन यू आर फॉलोइंग दिस करो यहाँ पे आप देख सकते हैं वी सेवन इज जीरो एंड वी फाइव इज ऑल्सो जीरो और इफ वी फाइव इज नॉट जीरो इट इज वेरी क्लोज टू जीरो सो यू आर एंश्योरिंग दैट टू हारमोनिक्स आर साइमल्टेनियसली मेड इक्वल टू जीरो टू हारमोनिक्स आर साइमल्टेनियसली यू नो एलिमिनेटेड सो देयर फोर आई कैन राइट फॉर हाई मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्सेज फॉर हाई इन्वर्टर आउटपुट वोल्टेज विच मीन्स फॉर हाई मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्सेज C is good point, good operating point. आप C पे आप low modulation index यहाँ से शुरू करें और जब आप यहाँ somewhere here पहुँच जाते हैं then you jump to this curve, okay? फिर और you can यहाँ यहाँ पहुँच के आप इस curve पे jump करते हैं और फिर आप जब इसके आस पास मैंने यू आर मूविंग यू आर लोकस ऑफ द पॉइंट इज अराउंड दिस यू आर इंक्रीजिंग वी वन मोनोटोनिकली एंड यू आर कीपिंग वी सेवन एंड वी फाइव ऑल्सो वेरी वेरी लो so that will keep weighted thd of the voltage very very low so that thd of current is also kept low so therefore our this aim is fulfilled minimization of weighted thd of voltage so for minimization of weighted thd of voltage for for low modulation indexes follow this may be the locus of the point pwm waveforms and store these alpha 1 and alpha 2 informations in a lookup table and for high modulation indexes the locus of point is around this c okay above and below because here v5 and v7 are not very very low they are very nearly equal to zero and weighted thd is nearly i mean weighted thd is minimized and you store these alpha 1 and alpha 2 information in the form of lookup table and when you have to operate your motor fetch those alpha 1 and alpha 2 values from lookup table from the memory and produce the uh, your your control algorithm will accordingly according to those alpha 1 and alpha 2 switching angles switching combinations it will produce the desired voltage pwm voltage waveform across the motor in such a way that v1 is controlled and simultaneously v5 and v7 are very nearly equal to zero around zero which results in minimization of weighted thd of voltage so therefore <clears throat> those alpha 1 and alpha 2 combinations these switching angles around this uh, along this contour and along this contour they are stored in the lookup table so in the form of a stored waveform so what you are when you are storing uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 you are basically storing this waveform pwm voltage waveform because each switching angle will give certain pwm voltage waveform so this that's why it's called stored waveform pwm you are storing it offline in a lookup table and then fetching it for control of uh, you know inverter output voltage and simultaneously fulfilling the objective of minimization of weighted thd of the voltage fine <clears throat> so this is how uh, you know we select um Uh, we we uh, go for offline optimized pwm technique with minimization of weighted thd of the voltage and store alpha 1 and alpha 2 in uh, that stored wave this waveform is stored in the form of a lookup table now our objective may be different i mean our objective may be minimization of pulsating torque minimization of pulsating torque first of all you have to understand what causes pulsating torque let us assume we have a three phase induction motor and this induction motor is supplied with a purely sinusoidal three phase voltage this three phase sinusoidal voltage will result in the flow of three phase sinusoidal currents both in stator windings as well as rotor windings so the fluxes will be sinusoidal and currents will also be sinusoidal and we already know that torque in the motor is produced by the interaction of flux and uh, current motor current so torque is produced torque is produced due to the interaction of flux air gap flux and motor current 
If voltage applied to the motor is sinusoidal, it will result in the flow of sinusoidal motor current. So flux will be sinusoidal, current will also be sinusoidal. So there will be a steady torque will be produced. Steady torque will be produced by the motor. It will have no pulsating torques. But that is not the case when you are controlling your motor uh, through an inverter. And you are using, for example, an inverter. The inverter produces the PWM voltage waveform. And this PWM voltage, when it gets applied across the motor terminals, it has fundamental component and as well as harmonics. And those harmonics will produce harmonic currents. And then because of the flow of harmonic currents in the motor windings, harmonics fluxes will also be produced. So these harmonic fluxes will interact with uh, you know motor currents and they will produce harmonic torques see you will have fundamental component of current and sinusoidal flux also because of fundamental component of current they will interact with each other I will write here uh, sinusoidal flux and fundamental component of current fundamental component of motor current interact so what type of torque they produce they produce steady torque they produce steady torque see if there would have been only fundamental component of current and only sinusoidal flux then your motor would have produced steady torque no problem but your inverter in addition to fundamental component of voltage it is applying certain harmonics maybe say fifth harmonic seventh harmonic eleventh harmonic voltage is there and those voltages will result in the flow of 5th harmonic current, 7th harmonic current, 11th harmonic currents. And those harmonic currents will produce harmonic fluxes. Then harmonic fluxes may interact with, you know, fundamental component of current. Or fundamental flux may interact with harmonic fluxes, harmonic component of currents. And that will produce harmonic torques or pulsating torques. So, pulse, I will write here. Pulsating torque is produced due to the interaction of pulsating torque is produced due to the interaction of number one fundamental current fundamental current and harmonic fluxes <clears throat> fundamental current and harmonic flux fundamental component of current interacts with harmonic flux maybe fifth harmonic flux and it produces pulsating torque second is uh, fundamental flux interaction of fundamental flux and harmonic current Maybe fundamental component of flux, uh, you know, interacts with fifth harmonic component of current or seventh harmonic component of current, and that also is responsible for producing harmonic, uh, this pulsating torque. And third is harmonic flux and harmonic current. They may interact and produce pulsating torque but since harmonic component of currents and harmonic fluxes are very very negligibly small in amplitude so uh, pulsating torques produced by the interaction of harmonic flux and harmonic current is negligibly small so main two reasons are interaction of fundamental current and harmonic flux and inter or interaction of fundamental flux and harmonic current so fundam harmonic flux interacting with fundamental current is mainly responsible for producing um, so I will write here main cause is the interaction of fundamental flux and harmonic current for example let us take an example let us suppose there is fifth harmonic component of voltage. In the inverter output voltage, PWM voltage waveform has strong fifth harmonic component. 
this will result in the flow of fifth harmonic component of current and that will produce fifth harmonic component of flux so fifth harmonic component of flux will be produced and so i should write here main cause of main, main cause is the interaction of harmonic flux harmonic flux and fundamental current so fifth harmonic component of voltage if it is present in the inverter output voltage pw voltage it will produce fifth harmonic component of current that will produce fifth harmonic flux which will rotate in the anti clockwise direction at a speed five times fundamental on the other hand you will have fundamental component of voltage also that will produce fundamental component of current and fundamental component of current will produce fundamental flux and this flux will be say for example rotating in the clockwise direction at a speed omega this fifth harmonic flux which is because of fifth harmonic component of voltage and hence fifth harmonic component of current it will produce you know a fifth harmonic flux which will be rotating in the anti clockwise direction at 5 omega so what is the relative speed between the two fluxes fundamental flux and harmonic flux it is this is 5 omega in this direction omega so it is 6 omega so therefore the interaction of these two it will produce sixth harmonic torque because the uh, relative motion between the two is 6 omega so sixth harmonic pulsating torque will be produced because of the interaction of fundamental component of current and fifth harmonic you know this uh, fifth harmonic flux similarly let us suppose there is seventh harmonic component of voltage is applied across the motor terminals that will result in seventh harmonic component of current which will produce seventh harmonic flux and this seventh harmonic flux will rotate um, in the same direction at seven times omega seven times fundamental frequency on the other hand fundamental component of current will produce flux which is also rotating at omega see now seventh harmonic flux will rotate at seven omega and fundamental flux which is because of fundamental component of current will rotate in the same direction as omega again what is the relative speed between the two 6 omega 7 omega minus omega 6 omega and this will also produce sixth harmonic torque so therefore sixth harmonic torque will be very strong and our aim is to suppress this sixth harmonic torque or sixth pulsating torque because otherwise this pulsating torque will may cause strong vibrations in the shaft of the motor okay so the best thing is that you suppress the fifth harmonic component of current make it equal to zero you can do that if fifth harmonic component of voltage is absent in the inverter output voltage suppress the seventh harmonic component of voltage also that will make i7 equal to zero so when you are selectively sub eliminating fifth harmonic component of voltage seventh harmonic component of voltage fifth and seventh harmonic currents will not be there and there will not be these 5 5 and 5 7 these fluxes and hence sixth harmonic torque will i this pulsating torque will go it will not be but it is not possible at all operating point just few moments back we have seen that at all operating points it's not possible to uh, have exactly v5 equal to 0 and exactly v7 equal to 0 for example just few moments back we saw that at low modulation indexes v5 and v7 may be very closely equal to 0 but not both of them will be equal to 0 and at high modulation index also indexes also v5 may be at some point equal to 0 but v7 may not be equal to 0 at some other point v7 may be 0 but v5 may not be equal to 0 it has been found that uh, with uh, two switching angles you know per quarter it's not possible to to make at all operating points to make v5 equal to 0 and v7 equal to 0 it's not possible however it has been found that this pulsating torque t6 is directly proportional to difference between fifth harmonic current and seventh harmonic current which means it is directly proportional to v5 by 5 minus v7 by 7 so therefore if v fifth harmonic component of voltage is v5 by 5 is made very nearly equal to v7 by 7 i mean 
if v5 is not zero v7 is not zero but their difference is zero so that means that is possible only when fifth harmonic component of voltage is very nearly same as seventh harmonic component of voltage so that v5 by 5 minus v7 by 7 is equal to zero and when this difference is zero this, this pulsating torque will automatically be equal to zero let us see how we can do that what is the switching angle combinations for that for that purpose if you see the switching angle plane i will roughly draw this switching angle plane this is 0 degree, 30 degree, 90 degrees, say this is 90 degree, alpha 1 equal to 90 degrees, alpha 2 equal to 90 degrees and this is your, sorry, this is V1 equal to 1.0 per unit, okay, and this is V1 equal to 0 per unit, contour, and we already know this is v5 equal to zero contour and sorry <coughs> this is v5 equal to zero contour and this is v this is v7 equal to zero contour ठीक Similarly here, this is V7 equal to zero contour and this is V5 equal to zero contour. Similarly here, this is V5 equal to zero contour and this is V7 equal to zero contour. So <coughs> if you start from here, here V5 is zero, V7 is zero, up niche niche jaye, V1 you increase still v5 and v7 are zero so t6 will be zero but what about if you reach this point at this point v7 is zero but v5 is not equal to zero so there will be a strong this pulsating torque t6 will be present so what we do is that along this line say at point p we find all those switching angle combinations which will give which will not give v5 equal to zero and v7 equal to zero which will give this difference v5 minus v7 nearly equal to zero so we find all, all those switching angle combinations, alpha 1 and alpha 2, which will give V5 minus V7 equal to 0. Similarly, here V5 B0, V7 B0, here along this curve, uh, say point Q, this, this may be point Q, here I will combinations alpha 1 and alpha 2, ki dunga, I will search, which will give V5 minus V7 equal to 0. So that sixth harmonic torque or pulsating torque, which is proportional to V5 by 5 minus V7 by 7 is nearly equal to 0. So therefore, you have to find a relationship, you have to find all those points, all those contours or all those operating points where V5 is not exactly 0, V7 is not exactly, but their difference is 0. And it is very easy, you can find those points along this अगर आप यहाँ से यहाँ ऑपरेट करते हैं और फिर अगर आप इस कर्व पे ऑपरेट करते हैं अलोंग दिस वी कैन फाइंड दोस पॉइंट्स दोस अल्फा वन एंड अल्फा टू स्विचिंग कंबिनेशंस विच विल गिव दिस डिफरेंस इक्वल टू जीरो एंड व्हेन दिस डिफरेंस इज नियरली इक्वल टू जीरो इट विल एलिमिनेट दिस पल्सेटिंग you know, minimize the pulsating torque. For minimizing pulsating torque, you don't need to make, you don't need to eliminate fifth harmonic or uh, seventh harmonic. But you need to find all those points at which the difference of the two harmonics is nearly equal to zero. This is, this may be another objective. So for that purpose, for that purpose again, uh, this all process will be done offline. And you know, whatever switching angle uh, combinations you will find, uh, so, so that waveform you are storing, uh, that information you are storing in the form of a lookup table and later on when you have to run your motor, just fetch those alpha 1 and alpha 2 combinations. So those different alpha 1 and alpha 2 combinations at which V5 minus V7 equal to 0 will give such PWM voltage waveforms across the motor terminals which will ensure that V1 is controlled and simultaneously the pulsating torque T6 is kept nearly equal to 0. Similarly, if you are, uh, you know, uh, aim is minimization of losses, motor losses, minimization of losses. In that case, you find, uh, you know, the, you find some mathematical equation of motor loss, losses, 
and you find some relation, function of switching angles, alpha 1 and alpha 2. If you are find, able to find these motor losses, their relationship with switching angles, motor losses as a function of switching angles, so you can store offline these alpha 1 and alpha 2 again in the lookup table and fetch those values, run your motor with minimum losses. Okay, so therefore your selective harmonic elimination techniques which we have been discussing over the last three to four lectures and we, we have tried to understand it graphically with the help of switching angle plane. Here uh, you may, your aim may be to suppress certain harmonics, we have seen how we can suppress harmonics or aim may be minimization of weighted THD for which purpose you know uh, I have shown you how we can um, choose the alpha 1 and alpha 2 combinations in such a way that weighted THD is kept low. Our aim may be minimization of pulsating torque and here in this case you find such combinations of switching angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 at which V5 minus V7 is nearly equal to 0 so that the pulsating torque T6 is nearly equal to 0 or if your aim is minimization of motor losses you find the relationship between motor losses and switching angles store the switching angle information in the form of lookup table so that becomes your stored waveform PWM offline optimized PWM technique fetch those alpha and alpha 2 and ensure that motor losses are kept at minimum so this is uh, that's all about low switching frequency PWM actually when we are doing this basically when you are calculating alpha 1 alpha 2 and maybe alpha 3 also you have to solve uh, the iterate you have to solve the transcendental equations whether your aim is minimization of pulsating torque or your aim is minimization of weighted THD or aim is minimization of losses you have to solve transcendental equations we have seen over last few lectures how those transcendental equations can be solved you have to use numerical iterative procedure like Newton Refson technique and or other numerical iterative procedure to get the values of alpha 1 and alpha 2 in such a way that your aim is fulfilled that is fundamental component of inverter output voltage is controlled and simultaneously either weighted THD is minimized if that is your aim or pulsating torque is kept nearly equal to zero if that is your aim or motor losses or total system losses are kept low if that is your aim so this all is done offline this low switching frequency PWM techniques are basically not online techniques they are offline PWM techniques here depending upon what is your you know objective is it minimization of pulsating torque or minimization of weighted THD or something else you you know solve the equations first you try to understand that graphically and then solve the equations, those transcendental equations, find alpha 1 and alpha 2 combinations, store them in the form of a waveform or as a lookup table and then later on when you have to drive your load, fetch those alpha 1 and alpha 2 combinations such that the fundamental component of voltage gets controlled, that is V1 is controlled and simultaneously your aim is, other aim is also fulfilled which may be minimization of pulsating torque or minimization of weighted THD or minimization of losses etc. So with this I will end my today's lecture and this of course ends our discussions on low switching frequency PWM which was mainly focused around switching the sorry selective harmonic elimination technique. We have seen how we can uh, uh, you know eliminate one harmonic either fifth or seventh using two switching angles or how we can eliminate two harmonics or more than two harmonics using more than two switching angles per quarter cycle and how actually we actually all these techniques are offline optimized PWM techniques stored waveform PWM techniques how we can you know store the information of alpha and alpha to switching angle uh, angles uh, how we can store them in the form of a lookup table and fulfill our desired objective so for high power drives the slow switching frequency PWM is very popular so I hope uh, I have been able to, you know, deliver in the best way uh, the main objective and main aim of low switching frequency PWM, uh, selective harmonic elimination technique, you know, offline optimized PWM technique, you know, uh, how we, uh, you know, using the switching angle plane, we have been able to understand uh, very deeply 
uh, how we can you know uh, calculate this alpha 1 and alpha 2 for what for different combinations of these switching angles uh, what is what, what are the various types of harmonics which we can suppress or which we can reduce and how we can fulfill our objective of controlling the fundamental output voltage of the inverter and simultaneously minimization of weighted THD or minimization of pulsating torque etc. So with this I will end my today's lecture. There are some very good references, some international publications. The list I will uh, share with you uh, in a minute's time on your WhatsApp group. You please uh, if possible download those uh, research publications. Most of them are IEEE transaction publications, research papers. And those of you who want to do your project or dissertation on low switching frequency PWM, you can go through those papers and study those papers. So thank you very much.